Hey everyone, welcome to Storyteller's Handbook and today we're going to talk about big mistakes that new playwrights make. Hey everyone, Joelle Brown here, director, actress, author. I have a BFA in theater and drama studies from a university conservatory program and over 13 years experience in theater. I am also the author of fiction novel, The Refining. Many new directors I meet are becoming directors because they have this great idea for a play. And some of the best plays have come from someone who has no experience writing plays, but just got this idea for these wonderful characters or this great plot, and now they're excited to put it on stage. But before you get on stage, let me help you not make any of these mistakes that I see from new playwrights all the time. A great play starts from a fantastic script. The script is subpar, the best the play can be is subpar. So let's start with a fantastic script so your show can be fantastic. Mistake number one, info dumping. It's important for the audience to know who your characters are, what their background is, important information you need them to get, but don't do it in an info dump. I've seen this so often. Hey Susie, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I actually just came from school where I'm getting my you know bachelor of science where my dad also went to school before he tragically died in a motorcycle accident and that's why I've always had the passion of doing science because if he couldn't fulfill his lifelong dream I will and by the way my mom also has Alzheimer's so I'm studying to try to cure her Alzheimer's like it's too much just stop we always say show don't tell it should come out naturally people don't talk like that it's not interesting theater to watch I'm sitting here watching 30 monologues of you telling me the whole story now, if you want to share one important piece of information, hey, you just came from school. Yeah, those science classes are killing me. Great, move on. Give us little tidbits as we go, but don't just dump all the information on us. It shows that you're a new playwright and it kind of makes you look a little bit like an amateur. Mistake number two, too many locations. At some point, this play that you're writing is going to have to go on stage and you're going to have to stage it and you're just making it too difficult for yourself. You need to simplify the location. Bobby and Susie are walking to the store as they're talking about their mom for two pages. Scene change, now they're in the hospital where their mom was hit by a car for two pages. Scene change, now they're back at school where they're telling their teacher about their mom who got hit by a car. Scene change, now they're at the lawyer's office where they're suing the person who hit their mom by a car for one page. Scene change, now they're back in the park and they're looking at the crime scene and all of a sudden they're in front of the judge. First of all, what's gonna happen is this going to be very hard for you at the end of the road. When you're writing a play, you also have to think ahead. Your audience is going to be sitting in a blackout, maybe, waiting for you to change, make all these scene changes. You're going to have to tell us where you are if you can't show us where you are, which is more telling and not showing, which we don't want. Like, hey, Bobby, isn't this part beautiful? Let's go look at the crime scene. It's not many brilliant plays are done in one location. Your play is either going to be character driven or plot driven. Don't let it be location driven. Nobody is paying to come watch you show us a bunch of different locations. Make it about the characters and the interactions. Make it about the plot and the exciting unraveling of what happens. Don't make it about the locations. The next mistake is filler dialogue. Hey Susie, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Those are new shoes, they look great. Yeah, they're great, eh? I just got them from Kmart. Whenever I go to see a show and I hear that dialogue, I'm like, they are new at writing a show. None of this has anything to do with developing the character, developing the plot, creating conflict, resolving conflict. You're literally just, you're feeling just trying to fill the page. You're trying to just talk. Worked with many new playwrights as a dramaturge, which is someone who reads the play and gives you feedback um, to improve the play, pointing them out to you so that you can fix them. If it's boring or slow, it's probably because it's filler. It's not helping us to learn anything new about a character or advance the plot and you gotta get rid of it. So many playwrights I work with, they go, oh, my play is ready. And I go, well, how many pages is it? And they go, it's 50 pages. And I go, okay, that's pretty good. To take out all the filler, you've got 10 pages. Take the filler out. And if you're left with too short a play, that probably means your characters are undeveloped and or your plot is underdeveloped. So many things that could go wrong first thing you need to do is remove the filler and then you can see what you have left. The next one is distinct character voices. Now this is a bit of an advanced writing technique and it may take you to your second, third or fourth play until you're able to do this, but people don't talk the same. And I'm not talking about extremes where you've got the valley girls and then you've got the very well educated lawyer. That's not necessarily what I mean. So you can have the same phrase. What time is it? One character might say, hi, do you mind telling me the time? Because that person is regular. Maybe they're a people pleaser. The next person might say, hey, 
at the time, they're no nonsense. I'm more important than you. I don't have time for pleasantries. You can use the language to tell people things about the character. But if every character says, hey, what time is it? It's boring, it's flat. The reason we go to watch a play is to see these beautiful people unfold. So use the voices of the characters to tell us about the characters. The next one is no clear focus or direction. A play's got a main plot, but then it usually has multiple subplots. There's like a love triangle going on. Someone's trying to steal someone's inheritance and someone else in the background is pretending to be someone else because they killed the real person who they're pretending to be. Other things are happening, but it all has to serve the main plot. Yes, you want your show to be full, but there has to be a reason for everything happening. All your ideas are not gonna fit in one play. Always make sure that everything that happens is driving the play forward. Developing a character, developing a plot. If it's not helping the play, it's not for this play. And as a playwright, you've gotta be able to recognize that. Another big mistake I see is not enough conflict. We want to watch plays because we want to see stuff go down. We don't just want to see 10 people on stage and they're just happy all the time and nothing ever happens. Everybody's laughing and joking and then the curtain comes down and they bow. What did I just watch? I want my money back, right? We want to see people fight. Secrets reveal some big twist at the end. There's usually a main conflict that the show builds towards, but you need little mini conflicts in between along the way and they build up to the big climax max because we can't just be chatting and walking down the street so if that's what's happening in your play we need we need to work on that and the next one is an adequate resolution you work hard you create this great conflict there's this big climax boom okay now after the climax how's it going to be resolved Susie walks up to Anika and she says I'm sorry I just realized I was wrong all this time and Anika says me too and they hug and you're like what the heck what was that <laughs> like we need to see a realistic resolution now, I'm not going to comment on whether Hallmark movies are good or bad. All I know is that those who don't like them, a lot of times, it's because when the ending comes, it's so clean and neat. Not every story has a happy ending. You need some type of resolution, but it doesn't have to be a neat one. The person can die in the end. The child can be emancipated from their parents if that's what's best for them in the end. It doesn't always have to end up that now we're happy ending, bing, and then the two sparkles. No, sometimes the resolution is not not a neat bow, okay? But you do need some type of realistic resolution. It also can't just end. Like even if it's a part one or whatever, it still needs to have some sense of, as an audience member, I went on a journey, there was a beginning, you got my heart racing, I wondered what happened, and now I see where these characters end up. You need to look at your resolution and make sure that it works and it functions well. The next mistake is formatting. Now this might seem like it doesn't really matter how your play looks on a paper, but it does. You don't wanna look like an amateur playwright. The best thing you could do for yourself is format your play properly. Depending on what country you're in, there are different standards on how you can format your play. Just Google it, just go online, pick a format and stick to it. That will help you to focus your attention on things that might be missing. You might realize you're missing some stage directions. You have too many stage directions. You have assigned some lines to the wrong character. I've seen that so many times. Definitely don't skip the formatting step. And the last one kind of encompasses everything together. Editing. If there's a mistake I've seen among playwrights, this is the biggest one. A new playwright will write a play, they'll start on page one, they'll end on page 90, they'll press the final period, and they go, wow, I finished my play. Now it's time to start producing it. Absolutely not. I suggest a minimum three months of just editing your play before it's ready for someone else to look at, to give you notes on, for you to make further edits. Do not write your play and at the final period and now print 30 copies. 100% no. I remember one playwright I worked with and when I read her play I said I can tell you have never edited this. You know how? Because here you have a character on the phone calling their drug dealer. They're gonna do this big drug bust and they're gonna go and they're gonna get the drugs and they're gonna catch the dealer and, and that never got resolved. It never came up again. She wrote that plot point and she thought "Ooh, this is gonna be good and she kept writing the rest of the play and forgot about that plot point and literally had already cast the play by the time I got my hands on the script. And I said to her, it's very clear that you've never edited that. She's like, okay, so just take that part out. And I'm like, there's a hundred of these. I've been to plays and I'm like, that never got resolved. That came out of nowhere. What happened? But she said she was gonna do this, but that never happened. Like what happened? You know why? The playwright did not edit their script. 
this is my process so I write the play and I print it because I like to make edits pen and paper and I put it down and I don't look at it for a week that way you get to forget what you wrote I come back and I read it and I make big 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 changes then I go on the computer I apply all the changes and then I print it and then I leave it for one week and then I come back and I read it again oh boop, boop, boop. no 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 print it leave it leave it for a week and that three months gives you 12 opportunities to leave it forget it come back and look at it again with fresh eyes see what parts are boring if you're reading your script and you're like oh this one part I hate this part you know why it's boring those are the points where if you are bored reading it your audience is gonna be falling asleep while they're watching it there's so many things that could happen when you're editing but you need that editing time to edit and after you've edited I always suggest giving it to one other person if they're in theater that's great if they're not that's okay too find someone who's a reader who enjoys reading if you ever need me to read over your plays contact me I'll leave the link below to give you some honest feedback on holes they found characters that they found were similar not distinct enough plot holes never think you know it all you can always learn more even from yourself even going in and reading your own work and critiquing your own work you can teach yourself more well that's it everyone for the biggest mistakes I see new playwrights making I hope this has been helpful if you like this content please consider subscribing and please hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I make new videos and if you like this particular topic please let me know in the comments I can always make a part two thanks everyone see you next time